we've got a new and female Reserve Bank Governor, Michelle Bullock, but she wasn't rocking any boats today. She and her bank board, the Reserve Bank, uh, kept interest rates on hold today. No increase. Joining me is economist Leith Van Onselen of Macro Business. Leith, uh, great to see you again. Is this the right decision or is it delaying the inevitable rate rises that a lot of people are saying we still need? Yeah, Andrew, look, thanks for having me. Um, I think definitely it was the right decision. Um, obviously, we've seen, you know, inflation tick up a little bit because of these high petrol prices. But the more important thing that the RBA looks at and economists look at is what's called core inflation. So that's inflation when you strip out these volatile items. And that inflation is still falling. Um, we've also obviously got a weakening economy. We've got a per capita recession. Uh, retail sales and household consumption, once you adjust for inflation, is actually falling. Uh, we've got a softening jobs market with job ads falling. We've got the applications per jobs. Job ads is now at hot levels way higher than the uh, pre-pandemic. And the, and the big kicker here is that average mortgage rates are continuing to rise because we've got a huge set of uh, fixed rate borrowers who are basically switching from these cheap pandemic rates of 2% up to 6% or more. So what that basically means is that the uh, the average interest rate paid in Australia is is growing still, even though the RBA has been on hold since June. And it means that uh, basically we've got monetary tightening built in. So the RBA basically said they want to sit back and look at the data, see how it evolves, and then you know take action if they need to. So I think they're on the right path here. But uh, Leith, you know, you mentioned the per capita recession, and that is when you factor in the insanely big immigration intake that uh, you know is a sugar hit to the overall number. Oh, we're not in we're not in recession because the economy grew. Yes, because you just imported. 450,000 people in just one year. And when you divide the cake with those people as well, we're actually all poorer per head. That's the problem here. It's actually got to hit house prices, the immigration at that level, doesn't it? Nearly half a million people in a year. And to make it worse, there's actually been a massive increase in investment from China in property here. Nearly $3.5 billion in just one year. Good news for homeowners, Leith, but is that healthy for the country? Look, uh, I'll say I don't have an issue with foreign buyers as long as they're only buying brand new dwellings. So that's like off the plan properties because that at least adds to supply. The problem we've got is, though, in 2008, the uh, former Rudd government actually allowed temporary migrants to buy existing homes. And what we're basically seeing is we've seen obviously a massive influx in temporary migrants, which are mostly foreign students. And surprise, surprise, that's leading to more purchases of, of established dwellings by foreign buyers. Now, um, you know, at the very least, if the government's not going to cut the immigration intake, they should at least ban temporary migrants from purchasing existing dwellings in Australia, like it used to be before 2008. Um, I don't know about you, Andrew, but I always thought a temporary migrant was temporary. So why are we allowing them to buy our, uh, <laughs> our, our, our established property? It just doesn't make any sense. Well, if you're younger than me, so I'm going to forgive you for your naivety there that showed through just briefly. Um, but, the, um, you know, it's Melbourne that seems to be the biggest honeypot for immigrants now. It's just growing like topsy. Um, the Victorian government uh, also has a new female leader, Jacinta Allen, uh, but there's still the same desperation for cash, in part to pay for all the infrastructure needed now to keep up with this crazy immigration uh, level. And there's the same desperation, of course, for land for all these immigrants. Well, this morning, Treasurer Tim Pallas, who missed out on the deputy leadership position last week, announced out of the blue at a property council breakfast, the government's going to expand the reach of Victoria's tax on vacant land. Use it or pay for it. Um, it's going to be expanded from just the inner and middle city. He hadn't cleared it with a Premier first, by the way. Your reaction to this move? Yeah, look, uh, I, I don't agree with the Victorian government very often. This one I don't really think is that big a deal. Um, basically, um, the last thing you want during a housing crisis is for basically land to stay vacant. So... At least the margin, if you're going to tax that vacant land, it should bring it to market earlier. It might actually be, uh, boost housing supply. That said, it's really fiddling while the housing system burns. It's really small beer here. Um, the, the major problem we've got, obviously, is the immigration program. We're running an immigration program that's way too high. It's far higher than the ability for the nation to build homes. So the solution really is to, to, is to cut that. And what uh, Jacinda Allen should be doing is getting straight on the blower to Anthony Albanese and saying, look, we can't handle this immigration. You've got to cut it. And if you're not going to cut it, you've got to give us $100,000 per migrant that lands in Victoria so that we can fund, we can pay for infrastructure and all the other stuff that has to happen. And I guarantee you, Andrew, if she did that, the and so did uh, you know Chris Minns in New South Wales, you had the two leaders of the two biggest states copying the most migration, the federal government would be forced to cut immigration. 
Um, because the end result is you do not solve a housing supply problem by running the biggest immigration program in history. And that's exactly what the Albanese government's doing. And it's making the problem worse every single day. Yeah, and the tax is an example how Australians are being made to pay for an immigration program, a problem that the government actually caused. Uh, it's not a solution. It's just they're whacking you. Uh, Leith Van Onselen, thank you so much indeed for your time. Really appreciate it.